Welcome everyone, Mate Talk Time. My mate, my water, my drinking. I don't know if you saw the video that uh, we post or that I posted a few days back um, on Mel Fushuni. Had a chance to visit the man in June. It was an awesome experience. And uh, I, pr I had promised at that time that I was gonna do a review. It took a long time. There was a lot of things happening, but I'm glad, I'm finally glad that I'm off the hook and I created this uh, the video. Now, as I was preparing this video, an incident came to my mind. Have a look at this footage. How beautiful does this look? I'm gonna tell you more about this at the end of the video. But first, as I was preparing today, um, I don't know what made me think of this, but I, I love the thought of hidden gems. And it could have been someone's comment as they're asking me questions or they're suggesting some things. And the thought was hidden gems. Hidden gems is such a divine place to, um, well, I, I enjoy videos that are about hidden gems. So what I wanted to do today, everybody, is put forward four hidden gems that I really, really love, or have, uh, there've been, one is not in my collection, but I'll give you a little bit more detail about that. But the others, they're ones that I re really enjoy. So I'm gonna start a little bit more female leaning, and then I'm gonna move through to, I guess, more masculine leaning, so heavier sort of woody notes and lavenders and stuff like that. First one, Joyce Osmanthus. The house is called Maison Rabachi. They have a pretty awesome collection. The owner, his name is Mohammed Rabachi, and uh, he actually has partners from, with some really impressive perfumers from around the world. This is the first one that I came across, Joyce Osmanthus. This is even before I understood what the Osmanthus note was all about. Actually, maybe this is how I connected it all. This is how the Hidden Gems came about, because um, in my um, video of Encore du Tom by uh, Mel uh, Fushuni, he uses the Osmanthus note, but he uses all facets of it. And I didn't realize that the Osmanthus flower is a chameleon. Uh, so it's very, um, it, it does different things, you know, there are different nuances to that note. One of the nuances is apricot. It has this like white floral apricot kind of vibe to it. And in this fragrance here, it celebrates it the best. So as I mentioned, I came across this fragrance very early on. Actually, I already sprayed it, give me a sec. Yep. So when it opens, it does, it, it has, um, I believe it already has an apricot and nectarine fruit note in there, but it also has a green note. So it opens slightly fruity with some green vibe, but then the osmanthus is in the heart and the osmanthus really takes shape when it comes to that apricot component of the fragrance. This is wonderfully summer, spring, um, it is a lot more feminine leaning, so if for boys who like very light florals, uh, white flower kind of scent vibe to it, then Joy Osmanth is amazing. Ladies, uh, I think, not I think, I know, I mean, this is one that is a popular one on my scent bar here in the office. The, uh, the, the ladies that are in the office that work with us, um, they, they enjoy using this particular fragrance. There's a lightness to it. As I, said, as I mentioned, it does start, up, uh, start off a little bit on the green side of things, but as it begins to dry down, and I'm deep in the dry down now, has a beautiful white floral apricot. Um, there is tuberose in here, so there's a slight uh, sort of, it, very floral. I think that's the best way to describe it. Joyce Osmanthus, Maison Rabachi, awesome house. Actually, I'm gonna do the, uh, the, the for me, Maison Rabachi is one of those hidden gems. They have some awesome fragrances in their collection. So I'm gonna do a little bit more of a breakdown on some of the others that I really enjoy from, the, from this house. The next one that I have is Ex Nihilo. Now, I don't have this one. So this fragrance actually belongs to Carolina. And those who are familiar with my channel know that I've uh, worked with Carolina before. She's my sister. Also a crazy perfume lover. I think it runs in the family. She recently came back from a trip in Europe and she came across this. I mean, it, it runs in the blood and she's like, have you ever, have you, are you familiar with these guys? I've never seen them. Jumped on the web. They've got an awesome collection, French house. This is called Lust in Paradise and it is a really spectacular fragrance. I actually borrowed this from her. I have been wearing it myself. So it can be, it's definitely a female leaning fragrance or floral-esque fragrance, but a man can comfortably wear it 
key notes in here is lychee. So it had, starts off with a beautiful fruity lychee um, opening note. I, I, so I have Wulong Cha from Nishane. That also has like a lychee note uh, combined with, with, uh, with a black tea. So that lychee opening, it's very fruity, very fresh, very bright and it does it really well in this fragrance. It then dries down into more of a musk, so very light florals, I think. I can't remember what was in the heart. Oh, actually, I'll put it here. Um, but in the base, there, there is like a, a, like a musk to it, but that lychee fruit, and then I think there are all those florals in the heart, and then finally with that musk, perfect. Just a glorious summer, bright uh, spring kind of weather, uh, fragrance. Bright spring fragrance kind of weather. Bright spring weather. Oh my gosh, you know what I mean. I think I need to drink some mate. What I'm saying is it's a great fragrance for the, the lighter months, you know, the brighter months, you know, in summer. Man, I made a mess of that, goodness me. <laughs> it's a good summer fragrance, that's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, anyway. So Ex Nihilo, I, I've looked around. We don't have it here in Australia that I've seen. Um, so at this moment in time, it looks like it's purely, I mean, we don't get a lot. I always call Australia the colonies and in the colonies, we don't get, we don't have full access like in the US or in Europe and stuff like that. But anyway, next to the hill, this is one that I want to discover more. So this, for me, this is a real, you know, an awesome hidden, hidden gem. So I do look forward to, uh, next time I'm in Europe, to go and explore this house a little bit deeper. Anyway, this one here. Moving more across, one that I've been enjoying just so much. So those who are familiar with Mask Milano, beautiful uh, Italian brand, this, the, the creators of Mask Milano have come out with Milano Fragranze, Fragranze. Uh, they only launched recently. I even think they launched at Exxon's this year in 2022, I think, I think. Actually, I'll put it here. Um, very new house, uh, Oligarch here in, in Melbourne have actually uh, stocking their full range. And this one here, I mean, the name drew me to it. So the name is Panettone. For those who are familiar with the most glorious Christmas cake in the world, which is the Italian Panettone, it's kind of dry. It's kind of, it's not buttery, but it, it's, it's a, it, it does have a, anyway, it's Panettone for me is, it's just, it's just glorious. I mean, I love all things pastry. I think I've, those who know me have come to understand that. Um, but it's a Christmas cake. So I think the fact that I can only get it once a year is the other thing that entices me. There's candied fruit in there, primarily orange and lemon. It does have a slight liqueur flavor to it. So I, I reckon that, or I believe they put in um, like a rum or mascarpone. No, mascarpone is the cheese. What's the other one? Anyway, but some other kind of liqueur in there. Uh, anyway, so this one here, the moment you spray, so it doesn't, from the blotter, it doesn't smell like much. Actually, I'm gonna spray again. I've been wearing this today. Um, but on skin, <laughs> panettone, me just said, panettone with a mate. I can eat a whole, and I know, I can eat a whole cake, not on my own in one sitting, but over time, I can eat a whole panettone cake, which is probably not that good for me. So what I love about this fragrance is as a gourmand, so now cooler weather, let's say autumn, uh, it has a cake-like quality. That candied orange comes through so beautifully on that opening. As it begins to dry down, there is a, a rum-like quality to it, like a liqueur sort of a scent profile to it. It does dry down to a citrus, but I know that there's immortal flower in there now. Immortal flower. Uh, carries this beautiful, it's, it is, it's a natural scent, but it has this honey-like, uh, caramel-like sort of scent profile to it. It is a little bit floral, and that's what this fragrance dries down to. Even though uh, it, it's, a, it's not a heavy hitter, so it won't fill a room, but it has awesome sillage. When I'm wearing it, and it could be that my wife also, she loves wearing panettone also, but she picks up on this instantly. I can smell it, I was wearing it yesterday also, smell it all day long when she wears it it just I can smell the trail that, that this, this fragrance creates panettone if you want a nice gourmand slight there are some slight citrus notes in there anyway just a really for a gourmand and for a panettone lover it's just pure magic pure magic all right 
Last one. L'Arc, another amazing, this one here, sorry, let me finish. L'Arc, another amazing fragrance, this time from, it's a, a French, or well, another French brand. I actually discovered this in, when I was in Exxons this year, uh, this was one of the brands that, you know, the place is huge, but this is one of the brands that really stood out. The perfumer for this is Julien Rasquinet. I'll say it properly. Julien Rasquinet, because I know I've got, a, I've got a subscriber called Luke, and he is observing the way I pronounce my French, my French words, so hopefully I said that correctly. Uh, this is called Evasion. And I think the full name is, actually I'll put it here. I know it's like Evasion Digo de Havana or something like that. Essentially, it is a tobacco style fragrance, but a tobacco style fragrance like I've never experienced. It has a very aromatic, bright, lavender opening. So it's interesting that it actually has in the opening notes, lavender, tobacco, and cinnamon. So you're getting this spicy, the tobacco earthiness, or that aromatic component of the tobacco with a very bright lavender. The lavender just really punches right out. This one here, then when it dries down, it does go a lot more into like a chocolate, into a very woody kind of place. It never leaves that lavender that comes so strong in the opening, never leaves in the actual fragrance, it stays very aromatic. Uh, but this is, a, this is a tobacco fragrance with a beautiful, bright, aromatic component to it. Very masculine leaning. So I mentioned that for me, uh, Joy Sosmanthus, a man can wear it, but it is very floral, very light, very um, sort of fruity and, and that sort of thing. So this one would be very female leaning. This one here is very masculine leaning, very nice aromatics, woods, things of that nature. The trail on this is, there's full and then there's atomic, and this one falls into the atomic category. It has incredible longevity, it has incredible trail. I was wearing it three or four days ago in preparation for today, and I, I, I went to the movies. I, I could smell myself, and others around me were also picking up the scent. I went with my sons, and one of my sons, who's got a nose for this fragrance, he's like, man, it smells amazing. I was, even with the smell of popcorn and all that, all those other sensory um, sort of uh, olfactory scents that are in, in the movie house, Evasion was holding its own. Beautifully aromatic, awesome as a winter fragrance, amazing as a summer fragrance. It's just, it's a really, it's a real confidence booster uh, for a gentleman. So nice suit. Uh, as an office fragrance, I'm telling you, if you wear this as an office fragrance, the, the whole office will know that you're there. It's a pleasant smell, so it's not like, a, like an oud where, uh, or heavy musk or anything like that might be a little bit offensive. I think this is a really like, this is a real gentleman's fragrance, really sharp, well-dressed. I think the lavender always works well as an aromatic masculine scent. Anyway, totally awesome, beautifully awesome. All right, so there are, these are my uh, four hidden gems that I would recommend that are really impressive. Um, and I, I can't get enough of Panettone. Panettone is next level. All right, let me move on. So I mentioned earlier at the start of the video, the, the helicopter shot, sorry, I lost my, that was a bit funny. Excuse me. I mentioned at the start of the video, the helicopter shot. What does that all mean? So as I was preparing the shoot for Mel, I forgot that this incident happened to me. And that was that I had a massive, so the night before meeting Mel, and I put this into, into context for you. We flew out of Australia, COVID had just pretty much finished, well, as in we were able to get on a plane, so it wasn't finished. We were able to get on a plane, wearing masks, all this stuff. Am I gonna get COVID on the, at the airport, on the flight, et cetera, et cetera. We land in Rome. We then got a train from Rome to Florence. We got in about 6 p.m. in Florence, went to bed. The next morning, got up early so we can be on a train to go to Salso Maggiore. So that was the, the sequence of events to go visit Mel. I was, and I mentioned in my video that I was a little bit worried in seeing Mel because I didn't know, I mean, we'd had some communication, but I didn't know whether he was going to be intense or, you know, and now I'm spending a day with him. And so, you know, sometimes um, you can be on your best behavior, but you get to a point and you're like, you know, I'm tired and I want you out of my face sort of thing. Um, so I was, I was nervous. I was really nervous. So 
that's, that's the precursor to what I'm about to share. This footage here, this was me uh, when we first started our business. We used to fly, we used to travel and do a lot of work for um, hotels, resorts, and tourism providers to promote what they do. And so we did a big shoot for a tour operator in New Zealand showing off all the different things that they could do. One of them was that you could uh, land on this, uh, one of, I think it was Fox Glacier was the name of the place, and you could land on there on a helicopter and all the rest of it. So this shot here is me hanging out of a helicopter with a harness on, and I'm following the helicopter that you're seeing. And we were going over a mountain, and I was literally hanging out. So on my feet, the door had come off, my feet were on the actual uh, legs of the helicopter and I'm leaning into my harness and I'm filming. This is pre-drone So now you throw up a drone and do the noise at all But in here it was actually a person behind the camera and that was me, which I used to love. I totally loved anyway So I'm hanging out filming this thing fantastic. All right now look at this shot here So this was done in two parts meaning that we were going to we were following this boat along the fly river which is in Queenstown and then the helicopter was gonna land, I was gonna jump in the boat, no, I jumped into the boat, and then I was gonna get like a, like a POV of the movement of this boat. So we're getting this perspective along the river, and then boom, inside the thing. Now, we were waiting for the boat to leave. We were in the helicopter. I had put my harness in, and we were about to take off. The thing was that the helicopter operator wasn't as, um, he was distracted and the harness that he put on, it didn't feel right. I, as I leaned, leaned into it, this is before we took off, it wasn't feeling right on me. And I'm like, something's not right here. Anyway, we're waiting, waiting. We've got our, our headsets on and he says, we, the, the boat radioed, we're now traveling. So he says, all right, we're about to take off. And just as he said that, no lie, the harness came off me, the harness fell off. <laughs> <laughs> so we're about to take off, you know, like you can hear the, the, the rotor, you know, the amping up and all of a sudden, boop, and I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> and so I, you know, I've got the hit and I'm like, hang on a second, my, my, um, my harness has come off. And I don't think he heard me because his response was, don't worry, don't worry, no time, we gotta go. <laughs> so we started to take off. So now I'm hanging out, the door is off, my feet is on the actual thing, but now I'm like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> this is where I die. Because um, I, I didn't have the confidence to lean into this harness. Uh, this thing was all floppy on me. And so I'm like, what do I do? Anyway, so I'm like, you're fine. Just lean backwards and hold on um, and you'll be fine. So I had to sort of steal my mind to go, just focus on what you're doing. You're gonna be okay. Uh, just don't be confident in the harness. Uh, it, there was something on me at least, but yeah, it was, anyway. So we're following this boat, and at one stage, I, I missed a particular part on the boat. And so I said to the guy, because I'm now in, in my zone, we need to go back. And so what did he do? He went like this, so he turned upwards. And so I'm now hanging out. And as soon as I called it, I said, no, we need to go back and do that shot. He goes, all right, hang tight. And he did this U-turn sort of thing in midair. So now I'm facing downwards, no real harness on me. And I remember putting my hand up on the top of the, the helicopter and bracing myself on, on the, the leg and leaned backwards with my camera as he did this U-turn in midair. And I have to tell you, my heart was racing. I was like, I, I, I was looking down. I could, I, could see, <laughs> I could see where my death was going to be if I had let myself you know, lean into that harness. Why? Well, I just had no confidence that I could, anyway. Let's just say the, the helicopter then landed. I, was, I got, the, the idea was I'd quickly get out of the boat, uh, get, get out of the helicopter, go into the boat and put a jacket, like a weatherproof jacket on my camera. I had done that so many times. I could even do it in the dark if I wanted to. I knew where everything went when it comes to this, this spray jacket so that the camera wouldn't get wet. I was so nervous I mean, doing this that I, I couldn't put this jacket on to the point that the, the boat operator is going, are you ready? Are you ready? Come on, we gotta go, we gotta go. And I'm like, give me one second. <laughs> I was like freaking out. Let's just, I didn't put the jacket on. I just, I, I risked it and I just went and thought hopefully I don't get the camera wet. Anyway, that story. 
because the night before, so now pull forward into the into being in in um, in Florence, and I knew that the next morning, so I was fatigued, I was tired, um, I was worried, am I getting COVID? I had a little, <laughs> is that COVID? Um, anyway, that night as we're in Florence, trying to get to, I was trying to get to sleep because the next morning I had to get up early to catch a train to go see Mel. I woke up in the middle of the night and my heart was racing, just like, like a, like a, um, I'd go like a racehorse, just, just beating out of my chest, just about. And I thought, oh no, I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> um, and then I'm like, I can't breathe. <laughs> I can't breathe, and I, was, and I felt short of breath, and um, <clears throat> I started to freak out completely. Give me one second, I'm getting a bit dry. And I started to freak out completely, and I'm thinking, my brain starts to race, and I'm thinking, if I have to go to hospital, where am I gonna go? I'm in Florence, I'm brand new in the city. I don't even know where the local convenience store is, let alone where a possible doctor could be. And so I'm having this, I'm freaking out, thinking I'm having this genuine and then my part of my brain, the sensible part of my brain, just said, you're having a panic attack. That's what it said to me, you're having a panic attack. And that's when I stopped and sort of like, yeah, I think I am having a panic attack because logically it didn't make sense that if I had COVID, I was gonna have a, a racing heart and all this sort of stuff. Um, and I thought to myself, so you're, so you're having a panic attack. And um, then the next thing that this, my brain said to myself is, dude, if you can hang out of a helicopter, and you know and be fine you got this you know what you're doing you'll have fun tomorrow with mail don't worry about it and in that split second i thought yeah you're right i have got this if i can hang out of a helicopter i can do anything and i thought all right so and i fell asleep and that was and then i woke up the next morning and away we went so um anyway i just wanted to share that i just thought it was a funny story i've forgotten all that i want to document it because it's one of those things that, um, for me at least, that sometimes you, well, I think, oh, I don't think I can do this. And then I always try to create some kind of reference marker. And I always say to myself, if I can hang out of a helicopter, I can do anything. And on that, my friends, that's the end of the Mate Talk. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Look forward to your comments. I'll see you guys all on the next Mate Talk.